beautiful sound, the sound of silence. There is nothing I enjoy more than coming home after a long day, shutting the door, sitting down, perhaps having a cup of tea, and having the silence. It is often rudely interrupted by other sounds in the house. Madam President, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. Ding dong! Yes, the dreaded doorbell. I grew up in an Irish bed and breakfast, and the doorbell was a big bone of contention between my sister and I. My parents were really busy upstairs doing the rooms, changing the beds, and all they needed was simply someone to answer the door. Ding dong! I'm not getting the door. Emer, I got the door the last time. It's your turn. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I was the eldest and therefore felt more responsibility and was usually the one to answer the door. With a quick shove to my sister and a puss on my face. Hi, you're welcome, I would say to the guests. I think we were actually shy children, which is why we hated answering the door in the first place. My parents might have to pop into town, run an errand, and they would always say to me, Aoife, just in case, but nobody is going to call. These are the rooms that are free. Hmm. Murphy's Law, nobody's going to call. They weren't gone down the road five minutes, ding dong, there's the bell again. I think running a bed and breakfast is a little bit like motherhood. Whether you're feeling sick, miserable, or you're tired, you have no choice. Get up, show up, and let's be honest, play up to the guests. There's also very little privacy, and our family time would often be interrupted. This actually worked to our advantage on many occasions, where we were being reprimanded for something we might have done earlier in the day, and sure enough, there was a knock on the door, or a ding dong, don't you go anywhere, I'm going to deal with you, or if not, I'll deal with you later. <laughs> I should run out the door and now how are you? Please come in. <laughs> we knew our punishment was at least postponed, if not forgotten altogether. I recall one particular occasion my parents were having a minor disagreement, as most married couples do. The voices were escalating slightly higher and higher. And sure enough, hello, hello, is anybody there? Excuse me, I'm just looking for directions to Atchill. My mother was immediately out again. I was greeted at the door by my younger sister, Emer, pretending to be an American guest. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, the punishment was not postponed that day. We also were allocated jobs around the house to help out with my parents. I was the eldest, therefore I got more job than the others. Mine involved dealing with the guests at breakfast, helping serve the breakfast, etc, etc. My younger sister, Emer, had one job. One. She had to mind the baby. I use the term mind very loosely. If you peeked into the sitting room, you would see her there, staring at the TV, with the Nickelodeon children's channel on, while Neve might be playing around on the floor. She'd have one leg propped up against the armchair, thinking that would restrain a two-year-old. <laughs> Neve quickly copped on that she could crawl out under her legs, run into the dining room, and loudly pronounce to the guests, I like he, but I don't like she. <laughs> she went through a phase of liking only the male guests, and she could really figure out why. It was on this one particular morning that Neve had made another escape attempt. I was rushing around with my hot plates of a full Irish breakfast. The world went still. At least my world went still. And everything went into slow motion. I could see the plates just on the tips of my fingers, but I couldn't grasp a hold of them. The, world, the room went silent. Well, after the crash and bang of the plates and the Irish breakfast all over the floor, because I tripped on me. 
I leapt out of the dining room, vowing never to return. My sister quickly leapt out of the couch after realizing that it was her fault that Neve was in the dining room in the first place. Indeed, she spent the rest of the day on her feet answering the doorbell that day. Looking back, the B&B definitely gave us some life skills. When I think about it, I've actually been dealing with the public since I'm about 11 or 12 years old. Can I let you in on a secret? I'm absolutely exhausted. <laughs> there is nothing more tiresome than dealing with the public day in, day out, and their daily demands. That is why I love to come home, shut the door, sit down, have a cup of tea, and relax with the silence. There are days I don't even want to talk to my husband. <laughs> If you're passing our house, please always call in. <laughs> but if you ring the doorbell and nobody answers, don't be offended. The doorbell and I have a very checkered history. And honestly, I'm still working through my issues. <laughs>